lasers, uh, which integrate the beauty of lasers, optofluidics, biophotonics, nanophotonics, electronics, machine learning, and biomedicine. Wow. <laughs> and uh, he has achieved several breakthroughs and has invented the first laser emission microscopy that can be widely applied to bio devices, cancer animal diagnostics, as well as behavior analysis. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me call upon stage uh, Professor Yu Cheng Chen to deliver this exciting talk. Uh, multiple fields that you need to integrate, 
For example, if you have, you want to learn biomedicine, but you also integrate with electrical and engineering, or you're trying to integrate this with physics and chemistry, or if you try to integrate these with computer science or mechanical engineering, things become more tough because you need to learn different field, different background, you need to collaborate with different people, and eventually most students feel very stressed or even depressed. So especially if you study a PhD working in interdisciplinary science or interdisciplinary engineering, it really requires more time to understand different field and different people. However, in my personal experience, I would say uh, PhD, uh, to me, I actually had a very fascinating time when I was a student. So P stands for play and have fun. So I actually did have a lot of fun during my PhD. So I would say I didn't lost anything um, during my PhD study. So I try to play as much as possible. And the second one is happiness. So happiness comes from a healthy body, a healthy mind, and also a healthy re relationship between your family, uh, your girlfriend, or your siblings. And D is development and research. So if you have great amount of research developed, of course, between you and your professor, you guys develop nice research, of course you will feel, you know, very accomplished, and then you will feel happy. So I believe in my personal philosophy, a PhD needs to have these three components in order to be a very successful PhD in the field of interdisciplinary science. So this is a brief background of myself. Uh, I graduated from National Central University, and then I went to University of Arizona um, Optical Center for doing exchange. And then I studied a master in, master in photonics and electronics. And then I worked at a hospital and in the molecular imaging center for three years. And then I moved on to Michigan um, and then studied my PhD and then worked as a postdoc in the Center of Precision Medicine. Um, so this is my whole pathway. So I will briefly go over what I have done before. So when I was an undergrad, I actually didn't have much um, interest in biology. Um, so actually my research project was very purely what triple E students should do. So at, at that time, my project was on solar cells. So we tried to use quantum dots and some uh, semiconductor materials to create some you know, solar cell devices. And so that was what I did at that time. And then I had a very precious uh, moment and did a one-year exchange at the University of Arizona. And there you can explore the world and see the most uh, fascinating optical center. And then when I was a master, I worked on nanophotonics. So nanophotonics means that when an optical structure is squeezed down to a very, very tiny structure in the down to nanoscale, many, many exciting properties will show up. So we try to use this nanoscale photonic structure to develop different devices. And then we use that type of devices uh, for biosensing. So my interest towards biomedical engineering actually was developed during my master degree. So we actually use nanophotonic or nanophotonic devices to create some tiny sensors. So when bioanalytes is attached or binded to these nanophotonic structures, you will see a shift in the wavelength. So these was a, this is a very basic concept of how biosensor works. And eventually we try to move this to some device or portable devices or some chip in the future which can be used. And I also had a chance to go to Paris um, for a very exciting conference. And then, as I mentioned, I moved on to uh, NTU Hospital in Taipei um, and worked at the Medical Imaging Center. So at that time, actually, everything was out of my imagination because my goal was to do biomedical engineering. However, my PI gave me a topic which is no, no medical, only bio. So the topic was on dinosaur. So during that three years, actually, I was forced to work on fossils and dinosaurs. So it's actually no, no medical, but purely biology. So we used, uh, we developed some 
nonlinear or shortcuts microscopy tools to analyze all sorts of dinosaur fossil tooth. So these tooth, uh, we got it from some museums, and these are all from different, uh, different time of dinosaur. Actually, I hate dinosaurs uh, since I was young, so I don't like this topic at all. Um, so that was something I hated so much during that three years, and I thought my life was, you know, collapsing. So then, eventually, uh, so these are some results. So we actually analyze these dinosaurs and alligators. So these are really the dinosaur tooth which we got. And flipping over, these are the uh, third harmonic or nonlinear microscopy images which we got from these dinosaurs. So we use the photonic tool to image these dinosaurs. And we study the tooth, the structures inside of the enamel and dentin. And we do a lot of analysis. And we also tried to build a 3D imaging method. So we did some image reconstruction. Um, although it sounds very scientific, right? Actually, it's not. So we use some you know, 3D reconstruction tools to build these 3D microscopy. And then going back to dinosaur, we use these tools to analyze you know, dinosaur right, that eats uh, grass, that eats meat, that's combined. So these are a chart of the dinosaur eating behavior, which I don't care at all. But my, whatever, my advisor cares a lot. And so this is, you know, we analyze different dinosaurs from different, you know, age and alligator. So alligator is one of the most important ones because alligator is the only animal which crosses now and before. So alligator is the most uh, closest animal between human and dinosaur. Whatever. Um, Finally, I still got the chance to do some medical part. So before I left the lab um, and went to US, uh, I, went, I went back to study some human tissues. And then I studied um, some cancer on skin. So we focus on skin cancer because skin is on the outside of our body. So it's much easier to penetrate by using these microscopy. So we use the same tool to study some skin cancer tissues. And then we use uh, some image analysis tools to analyze these structures. And we expect that we could develop some tools to, for some cancer diagnosis. So based on the research, I actually had a chance to go to the most famous uh, laser conference, which is called CLIO in USA, to present dinosaur. Okay, so I, you know, when I had the talk at CLIO, and I remember I finished the talk, and then when I stepped down the stage, I heard somebody say, how come dinosaur is in this conference? <laughs> and I was thinking, that's, I, I don't, that's not what I expect, you know, but it just happened. So then, but, but the good thing about this conference is I actually met my future PhD advisor um, at the Clio, but he was not there listening to, listening to dinosaur. So he's more interested to my you know, CV, but not dinosaur. But something which I have to mention, good, here is actually when I applied for a PhD uh, program, maybe or even a postdoc program, um, those foreigners or those professors are very interested in dinosaur. So when they look at my CV, they don't care about all those other things I did. They just ask, tell me about dinosaur. And then, okay, dinosaur is very fascinating. I tried my hard best to do dinosaur, and then they are very interested, and that's I think that's how I got my PhD. So uh, so still, uh, thanks to Dinosaur, uh, I got my admission to the U.S. Uh, to study my PhD. Um, but my PhD is, actually I did have a very good admission uh, if I go to Harvard on Dinosaur. Because one professor on developmental biology was very interested in my Dinosaur research. And he said, you can come to my lab to work on Dinosaur. And then I said, no, I don't want to work on dinosaur. <laughs> so, so then I, I, I went to the University of Michigan. I got the chance to uh, fly through there for interview. Uh, it was very cold. Uh, usually we have six months, uh, minus 35 degrees Celsius. Um, however, it was a very good experience. So summarizing all the things I have done before PhD. I did have a background in optics. I did do a lot of biology and cell medicine. I had experiences in like devices and also imaging. 
And regarding skills, I actually did do spectroscopy device fabrication and also worked on optical space system and tools. So one thing which is very important before you apply PhD and before you start to study PhD is you have to be always well prepared, multiple background and skills. So it does not mean that your PhD has to be the same topic as what you have done before in your master or undergrad. However, some skills, for example, um, during the dinosaur research, I actually did develop the laser and did build up the system. So those <coughs> skills are very useful during my PhD. However, the result of dinosaur, of course, is not useful for my PhD, but the, you know, the process through the whole thing which you have learned is very important. So it's, very, it's still very good to have multiple background and skills and ready for a new topic and open-minded is very important. So then I had a PhD um, in University of Michigan working on biolasers. So uh, biolasers, I'll, I'll go into biolasers uh, very quickly. So I actually worked on biolasers. We did a lot of sensing and imaging and we also work on a lot of devices and tools during that time. So, as I mentioned, I did have a very pleasant time at the University of Michigan when I was a PhD student. I enjoyed with the time, my living, the snow, the friends, and also the pumpkin, you know, the, the boating, the hacking, and finally I graduated. So, looking back, the time scale. If you look in terms of biology, I actually did a lot of research from dinosaur, leaf, DNA, you know, neuron, cancer. If you look in terms of engineering, I actually did have a background in device, nano, photonics, imaging, tools um, like uh, microfluid, resonator, and biochips. However, these seem to be very and highly, you know, not related. So how can you imagine that one to be related with dinosaur? Of course it's not. However, these things are all